Simplicity. Why does it seem so much easier to have a complicated life than an easy one? Simplicity refers to the enjoyable state of being that is easy and uncomplicated. My name is Sarah Leather, and I coach women to have a simply beautiful business and life. Their main problem is often around the constant struggle, striving, pushing, running and racing, trying to complete everything on their never-ending to-do list. They're trying to be the perfect wife, mother, sister, daughter, friend, businesswoman that society expects. But their lives are often far from simple. I start by getting them to declutter their heads, their hearts, and their homes, to let go of what's not working and work on the underlying belief systems that are driving their thoughts and therefore their behavior. These belief systems are what drive all of our behavior. They're kind of like our internal operating system or our internal software. And sometimes it needs a little bit of upgrading. In 2009, the Dalai Lama said, the world will be saved by the Western woman. Many have conjectured exactly what he meant by this, but I believe he was referencing a woman who was truly free and not caught up in the struggle of trying to complete everything and wondering was she really worthy or good enough for the what life she desires. A couple of years ago, after a day of coaching these women, I had a bit of a realization that actually I wasn't a whole lot different. I had, don't get me wrong, I had a good life, a great life. But my story at the time was that I was just so busy. For example, if a friend would send me a casual text message inviting me to coffee, I could send a reply as long as a college dissertation with all of the reasons I couldn't join her because I was just so busy. My life had got a bit complicated and something needed to change. So I followed my own prescription and started to declutter my head, my heart, and my home, letting go of what wasn't creating joy and purpose in my life, which included several of my own websites, watching television, 20-year-old college notes that were gathering dust, a lot of negative talk in my head, and listening to negative people. In more recent times, in a meeting with colleagues, I was stating that although I see simplicity as an ongoing task and a bit of a lifelong journey, I was, however, quite proud of myself that I'd let go of a lot of the negative stuff in my head. And although I still carried around a very big and heavy bag, I was much better off with all of the stuff in my bag than in my head, wasn't I? <laughs> I was caught out. Our group mentor looked me in the eye and he said, Sarah, lose the bag. Go six weeks without that bag. Downsized by at least 300%. If you're going to claim a life of simplicity, lose the bag. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I can't. Not me. I can't. I've got lots of important stuff in my bag, and I've got lots to do. I need my stuff. How can I cope without my stuff? I realized from my reaction that... I had quite a bit of resistance to it, and that there was something going on there. So rather reluctantly, my great big handbag challenge commenced. I endeavored for six weeks to downsize to a much, much smaller version. Day one came around and was an epic fail. I was leaving the house I was incapable of leaving without it. How could I go without my stuff? I had too much to do, and I needed my stuff. So day two, I needed a plan. I had to have a strategy. So I tipped 
everything out. All 68 items, including my large diary containing loads of bills I could pay online, seminar notes for months beforehand that I'd read when I got a moment, stationery, books, loads of gadgets, keys, phone, wallet, and four lipsticks. And a big realization that a lot of this stuff I was carrying around was actually work-related. And it meant that I didn't have the clear work-life boundaries that I coached my clients around. So a separate work bag was given that purpose for just when it was needed, which wasn't all the time. So off I went. Whoops. Sorry. Off I went with my bag, complete with my keys, phone, wallet, and one lipstick. After a few days, I started to notice that I started feeling a bit freer and lighter. Could there be some connection to what I was carrying around and how I was feeling? And could this be the same with other women? So I put my coach's hat on and started to get really curious about what I had to learn. I started interviewing and surveying women. I collected data from nearly a thousand women over the course of a few weeks. And I'd love to ask you now, hands up who here today has a handbag with them? Could I ask you please to take a little peek inside and have a little count of how many things you're carrying with you today. While you're doing that, while you're doing that, I'll just tell you the conclusion, the conclusion of the study was that actually, yes, in fact, there was a link with the majority of women to what they were carrying around and how they were feeling. Many said words like overburdened, overwhelmed, dragging them down. So, how many items have you here today? In the study, between 4 and 148 was the amount, 18 being average. And how many of those items do you actually use every day? Around 50% was average. And the next question asked, how many of those items are you carrying around every single day? and never actually use. And around a third of the items that the women in the study were carrying around are never actually used. How would you feel about going a week without your bag or downsizing by at least 300%? When I asked this, there, were, there, were, there was a huge variety of answers. Many said words like free, light, bliss, and liberated. Many made reference to purposely keeping their bag light and empty and said, as soon as it starts to fill up, I can start to feel off center and it needs clearing out again. Many said words like lost, exposed, ungrounded, naked, or grief at the thought of going a week without their bag. So, what do women actually have inside their handbags? There was a huge range that women had. Many carry food. Many said, I always carry snack food in case anybody's ever hungry, but I usually eat it myself. A lot of women carry first aid kits with them, just in co case anybody's ever hurt, so I can feel needed, someone said. Around 20% of women carried some kind of medication. A lot of that medication was analgesic, pain-killing medication. And one woman said, I always must have pain-killing medication with me. I need to be able to give it to somebody as soon as the pain comes on, because I hate them to ever have to feel it. Most women have some kind of makeup in their bag. Many carry a full makeup kit within their handbag. Even though I do a full makeup 
before I leave home in the morning. I always must have it with me at all times, as I'd hate anybody to ever see what I really look like, was one comment. And a very interesting that came back, that thing that came back that I wasn't really expecting was that several women messaged me, and it was almost like they had a confession to make, that although they, their cars were not, uh, sorry, although their, their handbags were very light and organized, they were nearly confessing that their cars, almost like an extension of their handbags, and carry items for every eventuality. My own observations since completing my great big handbag challenge were many. Such obvious ones like a better back and neck and an increased feeling of freedom and lightness. Also improved work-life boundaries. And before doing this challenge, I firmly believed that it was, that it was a fact that I had to carry these things around with me all the time, that I needed to carry them all the time. I had a really strong belief that it was the truth. But beliefs are just thoughts that we repeatedly think and are not necessarily true. So when I question that, is it true that I have to carry these things around all the time? And of course, the answer is no. We all have choices to make throughout the day. Some of these choices can help us, and some of them can harm us. And we need to make these choices from a place of self-care, from a place of feeling good enough about ourselves. Otherwise, they can therefore harm us. One of my favorite quotes is by author and speaker Sherry Hoover. The way we do anything is the way we do everything. The way we do anything is the way we do everything. The way I was doing my handbag was the way I was doing my life. I got so used to carrying around a lighter bag. One day I went to town and to work, my keys in my hand, my bag on my shoulder. And when I got there, I realized my bag was empty. I didn't have my phone or my wallet or my lipstick. I had an empty bag. When I realized that, I didn't panic or worry about how I'd cope without all my stuff. I actually laughed out loud. I didn't need my stuff. And I'd love to challenge you now at this point to think about what is it you're carrying around with you all the time. It might be a handbag, it might be a backpack, it might be some thoughts that you have in your head. And to think about what you could let go of over the period of a few weeks. What have you got resistance to letting go of? That's the big key. And try it. Try it for a few weeks. And then ask yourself the question, is it really true that I need this? Because I believe you can. And I believe you can. I believe you're worth it because you are enough without your stuff and I am enough without my stuff. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>